In the year 2154, humanity had not only colonized the moon and Mars, but had also extended its reach to the icy moons of Jupiter and the dark edges of the Kuiper Belt. The Earth's United Space Agency, EUSA, had commissioned the Starship Herald, a state-of-the-art exploratory vessel designed for deep space missions to venture beyond familiar celestial territories into the unknown vastness of space. Captain Ilara Miles, the commanding officer of the Herald, guided her crew through the black ocean of the cosmos with a mixture of iron resolve and inexhaustible curiosity. Her crew, a diverse group of scientists, engineers, and soldiers, had left Earth's orbit with the hope of discovering extraterrestrial life or habitable worlds. What they found instead was something far more significant. As the Herald skirted the periphery of Neptune's orbit, the ship's passive sensors pinged with the detection of an anomalous object. It was adrift in space, a stark silhouette against the backdrop of interstellar emptiness. Captain Miles ordered a cautious approach, her instincts as a veteran explorer warning her of potential dangers. The object was an obelisk, about 30 meters tall, with a surface as black as obsidian. It absorbed light rather than reflecting it, making it nearly invisible against the void. The surface was etched with luminescent symbols that pulsated gently with a light of their own. These glyphs were unlike any language or script known to humans and suggested a purpose far beyond mere decoration, possibly informational or operational in nature. Dr. Liam Reed, the ship's chief linguist and cryptologist, was the first to posit that the obelisk was not just alien in origin, but also likely a marker or beacon. His team set up portable decoders and interfacing equipment around the object, working tirelessly to unlock its secrets. Hours turned into days as the Herald's crew studied the obelisk. Finally, a breakthrough came not through linguistic prowess, but through technological interfacing. The symbols were part of a complex control interface that responded to specific frequencies emitted by the ship's communication array. Upon proper calibration, the obelisk activated, projecting a holographic map of the galaxy with a clear marker set at a distant star system, Omicron Valorum. Captain Miles, aware of the potential ramifications of this discovery, initiated a secure comlink to EUSA command. The decision was swift and unanimous. The Herald would set course for Omicron Valorum immediately under a veil of utmost secrecy. The potential for a first contact scenario mandated an approach that was both cautious and prepared for any eventuality. The journey to Omicron Valorum would take several weeks, even with the Herald's advanced hyperdrive capabilities. As they traveled, the crew prepared for what they might find. Diplomatic protocols were reviewed and rehearsed, weapons were checked and rechecked, and theories were posited about the nature of the civilization they might be about to encounter. Captain Miles knew this mission had just transformed from a routine exploration to a historic expedition. In her log, she wrote, We stand at the precipice of the unknown, and we are ready. For Earth, for humanity, we take this step. Should we find friends among the stars, we will greet them with open arms. But should we find foes, then let them be warned. Earth will brook no threat to her children. With resolve steeled and the unknown ahead, the crew of the Herald sped towards their destination, towards first contact, and towards a future unwritten. The obelisk's warning, or invitation, would soon be answered, and the cosmos watched in silent anticipation. After weeks of hyperspace travel, the starship Herald finally exited warp near the Omicron Valorum star system. The system was a vibrant tableau of celestial phenomena, multiple stars orbited by a diverse array of planets each potentially teeming with life. The crew's anticipation grew palpable as they prepared for what might be humanity's first encounter with a sentient alien species. Captain Alara Miles assembled her core team in the briefing room to discuss their approach. The room buzzed with a mix of excitement and nervous energy. Dr. Liam Reed briefed everyone on the language and cultural protocols they had devised from the data decoded from the obelisk. Although preliminary, these would help facilitate initial communications. We're not just diplomats and explorers, Captain Miles reminded her team. We're also guests in their home. Let's show them the respect they deserve. 
As the Herald approached the fourth planet, which the obelisk had highlighted as the central hub of the Omicron assembly, they were greeted by a flotilla of alien ships. These vessels were sleek and studded with lights, forming intricate patterns that likely had symbolic meanings. The aliens communicated using a complex series of melodic tones and visual displays, which Dr. Reed's team scrambled to interpret. To the human surprise, the aliens, self-identified as the Omicron Assembly, had been expecting them. The obelisk was a beacon meant to guide the worthy to the Assembly, serving both as an invitation and a test. The Herald was escorted to a massive space station orbiting the planet, where they were welcomed with grand ceremony. The station was a marvel of engineering, featuring a harmonious blend of technology and artistry, its halls adorned with vivid murals depicting the assembly's history and culture. Ambassador Thalia Santos led the human diplomatic team, comprising scientists, cultural experts, and security personnel, as they disembarked. They were greeted by Prefect Nilaj, the primary representative of the Omicron Assembly. Nilaj was a tall, bipedal being, with iridescent skin and eyes that reflected the cosmos's depth. The prefect spoke in a calm, measured tone that the universal translator rendered into English. Welcome, travelers from Earth, Nilaj began. Your journey has been long, and the courage you've shown in reaching out into the void commands our respect. Let us learn from each other and grow together. The initial meetings were filled with cultural exchanges. Humans shared digital libraries of Earth's languages, history, and culture, while the assembly showcased their advancements in energy manipulation, space-time fabric control, and their philosophical treatises on the nature of the cosmos. The humans were particularly fascinated by the assembly's use of biotechnology, integrating living systems into their machines and architecture. However, not all was as serene as it appeared. A faction within the Omicron assembly known as the Clath Nexus, viewed the rapid technological advancements of humanity with suspicion and fear. Their leader, Counselor Vorin, a stern figure with a commanding presence, voiced his concerns during a closed session of the Assembly's Council. These humans, though primitive, are proliferators of their kind and masters of war. We've all seen how quickly they've spread across their own system, consuming its resources voraciously, Vorin argued. Allowing them into the heart of Omicron space could be inviting the wolf into the den. Prefect Nilaj, however, maintained a stance of cautious optimism. They have shown a willingness to learn and to communicate. We must not let fear dictate our actions, but must guide them with wisdom and patience. As days turned into weeks, Earth's representatives worked hard to build trust with their hosts, participating in joint scientific endeavors and cultural exchanges. Yet, the undercurrents of tension and intrigue swirled through the corridors of power, suggesting that the path to mutual understanding would be fraught with more challenges than anyone had anticipated. Meanwhile, hidden in the shadows, the Clath Nexus began to plot their moves to undermine the fledgling alliance, fearing that the flames of human ambition might soon set the Assembly's carefully balanced worlds ablaze. As the weeks progressed, the human delegation on the Omicron Assembly space station worked diligently to cement relations with their hosts. Scientific collaborations and cultural exchanges were at the forefront of this interstellar partnership. However, beneath the surface of these diplomatic endeavors, a darker plot orchestrated by the Clath Nexus was beginning to unfold. Counselor Vorin, the leader of the Nexus, had covertly ordered the deployment of an operative with a mission to Earth. The target was Earth's Space Command Center, the heart of human space military capabilities. The operative, a skilled agent named Silrix, was to sabotage the orbital defense grids which protected Earth from potential space threats, leaving the planet vulnerable to manipulation or attack. Silrix, disguised as a diplomat, took advantage of the open channels created by the new diplomatic relations. He traveled to Earth on a ship carrying delegates from both civilizations, who were returning to discuss further collaborations based on the technologies and knowledge exchanged during the initial meetings. Upon arrival, Silrix executed the plan with precision. Utilizing a sophisticated viral program, 
he infiltrated the Space Command's network under the guise of updating the Assembly's diplomatic credentials. The program was designed to slowly degrade the functionality of the orbital defense systems, ultimately rendering them inoperative. Back on the Omicron space station, as Ambassador Thalia Santos was reviewing data from Earth concerning joint venture proposals, she received an urgent, encrypted message from Earth's Global Defense Secretary. The message detailed a critical breach in their security network, traced back to the assembly. Immediate cessation of all diplomatic contacts was advised until the matter was thoroughly investigated. The revelation struck Thalia like a physical blow. With a heavy heart, she approached Prefect Nilaj to discuss the incident, hoping it was a misunderstanding or a rogue element not representative of the Assembly's intentions. Prefect Nilaj was equally shocked by the accusations and promised full cooperation. However, internal security feeds discreetly revealed to him that Silrix had not returned from his mission to Earth, confirming his worst fears about the Clath Nexus's unauthorized actions. During an emergency meeting convened by the human delegation with the Assembly's leaders, Earth presented the evidence gathered by their security teams. The atmosphere was tense, with human military advisors suggesting plans for potential retaliation or defensive measures. Thalia, striving to maintain the fragile peace, proposed an ultimatum instead. Earth must not be forced into a position where we fear for our survival, Thalia stated firmly. We demand that the Assembly ensure such breaches never occur again. We need binding assurances, actions, not just words, that your commitment to peace is intact, failing which Earth will reconsider its stance on using retaliatory measures. Our worlds are prepared to defend themselves, and if pushed, they will retaliate. Your worlds will burn, just as ours would. The room fell silent as the weight of her words hung in the air. Nilaj, understanding the gravity of the situation and the possible brinkmanship of war, agreed to the terms laid out by Earth. He also promised to investigate the matter internally and bring those responsible to justice. As the human delegation returned to their quarters, the news of the ultimatum spread through the assembly. Various species and representatives were divided in their reactions. Some sympathized with Earth's threatened stance while others, like Counselor Vorin and his followers, prepared for the worst, believing that the humans' aggressive posturing might lead to war. In following the tense meeting and Earth's stern ultimatum, tension spiraled within the Omicron Assembly's corridors of power. Earth's forceful stance had sent ripples through the Assembly, awakening them to the genuine capabilities and resolve of humanity. Prefect Nilaj was tasked with not only upholding the peace, but also with rooting out the elements within his own ranks that sought to undermine these newly forged ties. Earth's Preparations Back on Earth, the revelation of the Omicron sabotage sparked a firestorm of activity. Global Defense Secretary General Mara Lindholm oversaw a series of meetings with the United Nations Space Command, UNSC, where strategies were formulated to enhance Earth's defensive and offensive capabilities. The project, codenamed Phoenix, was one of these strategies. A fleet of interstellar offensive platforms capable of devastating precision strikes should any alien force threaten Earth. We will protect our home by any means necessary, General Lindholm declared in a secure briefing to global leaders. Project Phoenix will ensure that any threats towards Earth can be neutralized with overwhelming force. The warning to the Omicron Assembly was clear. Provoke Earth and your worlds will burn. Omicron's Response On the Omicron space station, Prefect Nilaj faced the daunting task of maintaining unity. The news of Earth's preparedness to escalate their defensive stance caused a divide among the Assembly members. Some feared the destructive potential of an emboldened Earth, while others argued that showing weakness would only invite further aggression. Nilaj convened a special session of the Assembly to address the crisis. We stand at a precipice, Nilaj addressed the chamber, his voice echoing off the ornate walls. The actions of a few among us have brought us to the brink of conflict with a nascent, potent civilization. We must choose our next steps wisely, or we risk devastation. During the session, Vorin, still a powerful voice within the assembly, argued for preparation rather than capitulation. 
We cannot let the threat of Earth dictate our actions. We must prepare for all eventualities, including showing our strength if necessary. Despite Vorin's hawkish stance, Nilaj proposed a more diplomatic approach, suggesting a special investigative unit to fully uncover the actions leading to the sabotage, thereby demonstrating to Earth their commitment to peace and justice. This proposal was met with mixed reactions, but ultimately the Assembly agreed to it, if only to stave off immediate conflict. Human Vigilance Meanwhile, Ambassador Santos received continuous updates about the project developments on Earth. The possibility of deploying Project Phoenix weighed heavily on her. She hoped for a peaceful resolution, but prepared for the worst. Her team was put on high alert, monitoring all interstellar communications and assembly movements closely. Simultaneously, Earth's intelligence services worked overtime to intercept and decode transmissions from the assembly. A particularly alarming message intercepted from a source close to Vorin outlined a contingency plan for an assembly-aligned counterstrike against Earth's forces, codenamed Operation Scorched Galaxy. A stark warning. Broadcasted with tensions mounting and the threat of a secret offensive looming, General Lindholm made a decisive move. She ordered a broadcast of a stark warning directly to the Omicron assembly, transmitted universally in all known assembly languages, via high-frequency channels, ensuring no member could claim ignorance of Earth's stance. To the esteemed members of the Omicron Assembly, the broadcast began, General Lindholm's figure stern and resolute. Let it be known that Earth seeks peace above all, but make no mistake, we are prepared to defend our civilization following Earth's resolute broadcast and the tense discussions that ensued between Ambassador Santos and Prefect Nilaj the Omicron Assembly was in disarray. The stark warning from Earth, the looming threat of Project Phoenix, forced the Assembly to confront the potential reality of a war that could devastate multiple worlds. Omicron's Internal Strife In the wake of Earth's warning, Prefect Nilaj struggled to maintain order within the Assembly. The factions were deeply divided. Some members pushed for immediate peace talks, fearing Earth's military capabilities while others, led by Counselor Vorin and the Clath Nexus, prepared for war, believing that a show of strength was their only option to deter human aggression. Vorin maneuvered behind the scenes, rallying his supporters. If we bend now, we will always remain bent, he proclaimed during a secret gathering. We must finalize our preparations and stand ready to defend our sovereignty. In response, Nilaj expedited the creation of a transparency office aiming to investigate and publicly disclose all military activities to Earth, demonstrating their commitment to peace. He also proposed the initiation of Operation Peace Shield, a plan to fortify Omicron defense systems without appearing aggressive to Earth. Earth's Tactical Advancements Back on Earth, General Lindholm oversaw the final stages of Project Phoenix. The first fleet of interstellar drones equipped with advanced thermonuclear warheads, was ready to deploy at a moment's notice. The UNSC also enhanced their cyber warfare units to intercept and counter any Omicron electronic attacks that could precede a physical strike. We are not warmongers, General Lindholm briefed her staff, but we will take preemptive action if there is undeniable evidence of an imminent threat. The deployment of Earth's lunar-based deep space array, a network of powerful telescopes and sensor arrays, allowed UNSC to monitor any movements in and out of Omicron-controlled space. Any unusual activity would be detected long before any potential threat could reach Earth. Rising Tensions Ambassador Santos maintained open communications with Prefect Nilaj, who personally assured her of his efforts to curb militaristic actions from within the Assembly. However, intelligence reports suggested that the Clath Nexus might already be orchestrating the assembly of a hidden fleet, possibly equipped with weapons capable of penetrating Earth's defenses. As the Herald continued its surveillance mission around Omicron Valorum, its crew detected encrypted signals possibly related to military mobilization. Captain Miles relayed this information back to Earth, where it was decrypted to reveal a disturbing plan. Operation Scorched Galaxy seemed not only to be a defensive maneuver, but a potential offensive strike that could target Earth directly. 
Diplomatic Maneuvers In a bid to avoid escalating the situation into full-scale war, Earth proposed a summit on the neutral moon of Titan, Saturn's largest satellite. The location was chosen for its remoteness and the presence of a small joint human-alien research facility that symbolized cooperative aspirations. Ambassador Santos extended the invitation to Prefect Nilaj and other key assembly members, emphasizing the necessity of transparent discussions. Let us meet on neutral ground to forge a path to peace, her message detailed. We bring no weapons, only words. Preparation for the Worst Despite the diplomatic outreach, Earth continued its military preparations. Secretly, General Lindholm ordered the deployment of several cloaked observations. The summit on Titan was approaching, and the stakes could not have been higher. Both Earth and the Omicron Assembly prepared their delegations, with the world, or worlds, watching. It was a chance to peacefully resolve tensions that had the potential to erupt into interstellar conflict. However, hidden forces within the Assembly were not willing to take a chance on diplomacy. Omicron's Covert Actions As the delegations prepared for the summit, Councillor Vorin initiated a covert operation designed to ensure Omicron's upper hand in the upcoming negotiations. The operation, codenamed Silent Whispers, involved a two-pronged approach. First, a cyber attack to disable Earth's communications and surveillance, thereby blinding their intelligence capabilities. Second, the deployment of a stealth weapon that would neutralize Earth's orbital defenses without prior detection. Using sophisticated cyber warfare tools developed in secret by the Clath Nexus, Omicron hackers launched an assault on the UNSC's Deep Space Array. The attack was silent and effective, exploiting a previously undetected vulnerability in the Array's software. Within minutes, Earth's eyes and ears in deep space were rendered deaf and blind. Earth's immediate response. On Earth, the sudden blackout of space surveillance systems caused pandemonium within Space Command. General Lindholm immediately suspected foul play and put all forces on high alert. Initiate the blackout protocols, secure all communications, and bring the Phoenix systems to standby, ordered Lindholm. The protocol was a pre-planned response for such an event, an all-encompassing electronic shield that would protect Earth from further cyber attacks and allow them to restore systems securely. The Stealth Weapon While Earth dealt with the cyber blackout, the second phase of Vorin's plan was set into motion. A small fleet of Omicron ships, equipped with experimental electromagnetic pulse EMP weapons, quietly approached Earth's orbital defense zone. These weapons were designed to emit a powerful EMP blast that would fry electronic systems upon detonation, effectively crippling Earth's defense satellites and any ship within their vicinity. The EMP was deployed successfully, and the immediate effect was devastating. Dozens of satellites and sensors were disabled creating gaps in Earth's defensive grid. The once formidable array of orbital defenses now had glaring vulnerabilities. Diplomatic fallout. Back on Titan, as word of the attack reached the delegations, the summit was thrown into chaos. Ambassador Santos received an urgent secure transmission from Earth detailing the extent of the damage. The Omicron Assembly has launched a covert strike against us, this is a clear act of aggression that cannot be ignored, the message read. Santos confronted Prefect Nilaj with the evidence, her voice steady despite the rising anger. How do you explain this, Prefect? We came here in good faith, and behind our backs you strike at us? Nilaj was genuinely taken aback, unaware of the actions initiated by Vorin's faction. Ambassador, I assure you, this is not the doing of the Assembly as a whole. We must investigate this matter thoroughly. Despite his promises, the damage to the diplomatic efforts was significant. Trust was shattered, and the prospects of peace seemed more distant than ever. Santos, maintaining her composure, issued a stark warning. Understand this, Prefect. Earth will not sit idly by. We will find those responsible, and they will face justice. Peace is still our preference, but our patience has limits. Regrouping and Retaliation As the sum the aftermath of the Silent Whispers operation left the interstellar community on edge, 
Earth's diplomatic corps, although deeply shaken by the Omicron Assembly's betrayal, worked fervently to mend the ruptured lines of communication and salvage the fragile peace. However, on Earth and across human space, the calls for retribution grew louder, fueled by the fear and uncertainty the EMP attack had wrought. Operational Phoenix Ascends In the high orbit over Earth, General Lindholm convened an emergency session with the United Nations Space Command, UNSC, to reassess their stance and prepare for a potential conflict. The general, known for her strategic acumen, laid out the response plan. Project Phoenix is now our priority. It's clear that defensive postures alone will not secure peace, Lindholm declared to her team. The project involved a series of advanced autonomous drones, each equipped with enough firepower to disable a planet's defenses or strike at military bases with precision that had never been seen before. As the preparations for Phoenix's deployment continued, diplomatic channels remained open. Ambassador Santos, despite her disillusionment, spearheaded this effort, hoping to achieve reconciliation or, at minimum, a ceasefire agreement. The Omicron Dilemma Back on the Omicron space station, Prefect Nilaj faced unprecedented challenges. The rogue faction led by Councillor Voren had not only undermined his authority, but also jeopardized the Assembly's future. In response, Nilaj initiated a silent purge, discreetly removing Voren's allies from key positions and strengthening the security protocols to prevent further incidents. Nilaj knew that transparency with Earth was his only viable option to prevent war. He reached out to Ambassador Santos with a proposal for an Earth delegation to visit Omicron space to oversee the disarmament of the EMP weapons and any other military technologies deemed aggressive by Earth. Ceasefire and Confrontation Earth agreed to the oversight mission, but insisted that Project Phoenix would proceed as planned until all terms were met. A temporary ceasefire was established with strict conditions and high tensions. Ambassador Santos personally led the oversight delegation, wary but hopeful that this could be the turning point towards a lasting peace. Upon arrival, Santos and her team were shown every military installation requested, and every EMP device was accounted for and decommissioned in their presence. Despite these efforts, the shadow of Voren's previous actions loomed large, and trust was hard to come by. The Revelation Midway through the disarmament process, a breakthrough occurred. One of Nilaj's loyal officers intercepted communications between Voren and an unidentified faction outside the assembly, discussing a contingency plan that involved not just the assembly, but another more powerful alien civilization known to be hostile towards human expansion. Armed with this new information, Nilaj confronted Voren publicly during an assembly meeting. The evidence was irrefutable, and Voren's treachery was laid bare for all to see. Stripped of his power and arrested, Voren warned of the dire consequences of siding with humans, hinting at the powerful allies who would now consider the Omicron Assembly as traitors. A new alliance. With Voren's faction dismantled, Nilaj proposed a formal alliance with Earth, offering not just peace, but active cooperation against common enemies. The evidence of an external threat rallied the Assembly's members, unifying them in a way that had not been possible under the shadow of internal strife. General Lindholm and Ambassador Santos deliberated the new proposal thoroughly. The treaty between Earth and the Omicron Assembly marked a historic milestone in interstellar relations. The unity forged in the face of internal betrayal and external threats created a formidable alliance that promised to reshape the power structures of the galaxy. With Project Phoenix now a symbol of combined strength rather than a harbinger of destruction, both Earth and the Assembly looked forward to a period of unprecedented peace and cooperation. The Galactic Summit The success of the diplomatic missions and the formation of the new alliance led to the Galactic Summit on Serenity, a neutral planet renowned for its beautiful, unspoiled landscapes and its monastery, dedicated to the contemplative study of the cosmos. The planet was chosen for its symbolic representation of peace and introspection, ideal for the first official meeting of the new Earth Omicron Coalition. Leaders from various planets and civilizations within and outside the Omicron Assembly were invited. 
The summit was not just a celebration of the new alliance, but also a platform to discuss broader issues such as trade, security, and the sharing of technology and knowledge. Ambassador Santos and Prefect Nilaj co-chaired the summit, where they outlined the principles of the alliance. Mutual defense. An attack on one is an attack on both, extending to all member civilizations of the alliance. Open trade. Promoting free trade of goods, technology, and knowledge between allied planets to foster economic growth and technological advancement. Cultural exchange. Encouraging cultural interactions to build understanding and unity among diverse populations. The Signing Ceremony The climax of the summit was the signing ceremony of the Treaty of Serenity, held in the ancient monastery's main hall, a vast room with walls of translucent stone that glowed with the light of the planet's twin suns. The treaty formally established the Earth-Omicron Alliance and outlined its governing laws and principles. As Santos and Nilaj signed the document, the room burst into applause, a sound mixed with countless languages and dialects, a testament to the diverse nature of the galaxy's inhabitants. The ceremony was broadcast across thousands of worlds, bringing hope to billions who believed that peace was the path to prosperity. Implementing Peace With the treaty now in effect, the initial focus was on dismantling any remaining aggressive postures. Military bases were converted to joint defense and research facilities, where scientists and strategists from different worlds worked together to enhance their defensive capabilities and develop new technologies. Project Phoenix was rebranded as the Phoenix Initiative, its mission repurposed to aid any civilization within the Alliance under threat from external forces or natural disasters. The drones, once symbols of war, were now carriers of aid, equipped with medical supplies, food, and reconstruction materials. Challenges ahead. Despite the overwhelming support for the treaty, challenges remained. Some fringe elements within both human and Omicron territories viewed the alliance with skepticism, fearing loss of independence or cultural dilution. Addressing these fears, promoting integration, and maintaining security became ongoing tasks for Santos, Nilaj, and their successors. Legacy of the Treaty Years Later The Treaty of Serenity was viewed as a turning point in galactic history. It not only prevented a devastating war, but also established a model for interstellar diplomacy and cooperation that other civilizations aspired to emulate. Ambassador Santos, now retired, visited the monastery on Serenity, looking out over the lush valleys bathed in the light 